It's two o'clock Saturday morning and I'm just now getting around to recording this episode. I couldn't record it earlier in the week because I got my wisdom teeth pulled and I wasn't able to talk clearly and I'm still having a little issue with that. And since I knew I'd be sitting at home for a few days, I decided to play through Earthbound. And Earthbound ended up being a lot longer of a game than I thought. And I played it for four days straight now, and I just now beat it. And that's why I'm just now getting to recording this episode. And it's crazy because I've never been a huge RPG fan, but every once in a while one of them gets me sucked into the game. Paladin's Quest was the same way. Once I started playing that, I ended up playing all the way through that game. And then once I reviewed Earthbound, I wanted to play through that. So I did, and it was a great game. But unfortunately, I kind of screwed myself over now because I don't know if I'm even going to get this episode out on time. I originally had four games for this episode, but I think to save a little bit of time and try to get this out on time, I'm going to change that to three. So with that, today we have three more games that we'll be adding to the collection. Let's check them out. And the first game up is Joe and Mac. Joe and Mac was developed and published by Data East, releasing for the Super Nintendo in 1991. Back in the distant past lived two cave dudes named Joe and Mac. Everything was good until a bunch of Neanderthal nerds crashed the village and scared off all the cave babes. Now all the babes are lost and lonely and it's up to Joe and Mac to get them back. Starting off the game, there's a map with different colored spaces. Red spaces are battle stages. This is a normal platform stage where you beat the level and fight a boss. Once you beat the boss, you rescue a cave babe. There are lots of boss fights in the game, but they're all pretty easy and fun. The blue stages are bonus stages. These stages allow you to replenish your health. You can re-enter a red stage, but you can't re-enter the blue ones. White dots are saves. Going to these will place a statue and you'll continue off there if you die. Finally, there are evil gates. You need keys to open them. Keys are found in hidden stages. You break open red eggs in a level and a pink pterodactyl pops out and takes you there. However, if there are any enemies or fire on the screen, it won't come out and you'll have to re-enter the level to try for it again. Besides keys, you can also pick up other items such as one-ups or different weapons. Weapons include a club which you start out with, a bone you can throw at enemies, but they don't go very far, a boomerang which comes back to you, but you can only throw three at a time, fire which is super powerful, but you can only throw one, and a stone wheel which rolls and you can throw two at a time. You can also somersault in the game which is pretty neat. The game looks and sounds great and it's a blast to play. There's also two different two player modes available where you race to save the cave babes or help or fight each other to save them. Overall, Joe and Mac is definitely a game worth checking out. Joe and Mac is game number 225 for the collection and price charting has it at $99. And at $99, that brings our total up to $39,855 for the collection. And the next game up is Madden 94. Madden 94 was developed by Visual Concepts and published by Electronic Arts. It tackled the Super Nintendo in 1993. There's a lot of options in Madden 94. You can choose a 5, 10, or 15 minute quarter, a grass, turf, or dome playing field, and a fair, rain, wind, snow, or variable weather pattern. I chose variable and the field changed throughout the game which was pretty interesting. You can play with four friends using a multi-tap. The game has an NFL license, so real team names are used. However, no player names are in the game. You have a typical playbook like every other football game. The passing is simple. B hikes the ball, B opens the pass window, and you select the player you want to throw to using the corresponding button. When running the ball, you can spin a hurdle for evasive moves. We've covered John Madden Football and John Madden Football 93 already, and this is a noticeably better game than those two. However, the Madden series goes up to Madden 98 on the Super Nintendo, so we still have a lot to cover. Madden 94 isn't a bad game though. Madden 94 is game number 226 for the collection, and I got it for $15 at a local game store. And at $15, that brings our total up to $39,870 for this NES Quest. 
And last but not least is Pushover. Pushover was developed by Red Rat Software and published by Ocean. It released for the Super NES in 1992. You play as GI Ant that's trained in tactical maneuvers and your goal is to gain access to the crazy world of Captain Rat's treasure caves. To do that you must go through levels and open doors. To open the doors you have to solve puzzles involving dominoes. The dominoes have patterns on them that signal what they do. For example, a standard domino is yellow and falls how a normal domino falls. But then you have tumblers which keep going until they get stopped by a fallen block. You have bridgers with a thin horizontal red stripe that bridge gaps. Splitters which are half red and half yellow that knock blocks over on both sides of them. Vanishers marked with two lines that vanish when they fall. Ascenders that travel vertical which have a vertical red stripe. Delays which pause a short time before falling. Exploders that will leave a gap in the platform. Stoppers which are all red and can't topple over. And finally you have the trigger block which has three horizontal red stripes. This block has to be the last one to fall or the door won't open. You have a very short time limit in each level. If you don't solve the puzzle within the time limit, you fail the stage, but the timer will turn red and keep going, so you can stay in the level and figure out how to solve it before starting over. You also earn coins which allow you to skip stages if they are too complicated. After you complete each level, you get a password so you can pick up the game wherever you left off. And the game has a lot of puzzles and it's long, so that really comes in handy. You can hit the select button to restart the level at any time. Hitting start shows you what all the blocks are and their functions. It'd be better if the game had different colored dominoes rather than just yellow and red. But that's only a minor complaint. If you're a fan of puzzle games, Pushover is a game worth checking out. Pushover is game number 227 for the collection and I have $60 in trade for it. And at $60, that brings our total up to $39,930 for the Super Nintendo Complete Box Quest. Let's get these games on the shelf. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I'm completing the entire Super Nintendo Library complete box right here on the show. Also, make sure to leave a thumbs up for Joe and Mac. Until next time, I'm Gamer Wayne, and thanks for watching.